Hello YouTube. Thought I'd give you guys a look at the project that I'm currently working on. As you can clearly tell, this is an elevator project. This is for a class that I'm involved in this semester. And the requirements of the elevator are that it has at least three floors. We can have more floors than that if we like, but the professor suggested that at the very least we start off with uh, three floors and then if we want to go beyond that, then we can, but we should at least get three working first. So here tonight, I finally got all the hardware put together, got the programming on the microcontroller to a point where I have something I can show off, so I just thought I'd give a quick demonstration here. So currently the elevator is sitting on the first floor, and uh, let's just go ahead and press some of the call buttons and see what happens. Now currently the control board is this uh, mess of wires and breadboard down here. That'll all be uh, put somewhere else eventually, but, you know, baby steps. So let's press the third floor call button and see what happens. So as you would expect, when you press the third floor call button, the elevator goes to this location up here, which currently I'm calling the third floor. And if you press the third floor button while it's on the third floor, nothing happens. And that's important because you don't want the elevator to continue pulling up because uh, you could, you know, cause all kinds of problems. So from the third floor, if we press, say, the second floor, and you can see the elevator lowers down to this position here, which I'm calling the second floor. This is all being driven by a NEMA 17 stepper motor. I have the motor mounted up here on top of this box. I didn't build this box. I just bought it just like it is. Drilled a few holes in it so I could mount the hardware. And I created this uh, spool in SolidWorks because I couldn't, on Thingiverse, I couldn't find something similar to this, so I just made this in SolidWorks. And it just has string wrapped around it, which goes through a hole in the top of the box, which is attached to the elevator. And that allows everything to uh, work. Now, there is a situation that I'll uh, mention here. Let's say uh, we're on the second floor. So let's say the elevator is on the second floor and the system experiences some kind of crash and has to completely reboot. When it reboots, how does the elevator know where it's at? Uh, currently, I don't have any IR sensors or any ultrasonic sensors, nothing like that. I thought the simplest thing to do would be to, when the system initializes on, re, on, on, on boot up or on reboot, it's just going to lower the elevator constantly and it'll actually lower it forever until it detects this limit switch being pressed. So in the final version, I'm going to have this limit switch mounted down here on the, on the uh, very bottom. I imagine that right below the first floor, there's like a crawl space, a maintenance crawl space down there. And I'm going to have that limit switch mounted down there. So what happens, the uh, elevator will lower indefinitely until that limit switch is triggered, at which point the elevator says, uh, or the microcontroller says, okay, I've hit that limit switch. Now I need to stop lowering the elevator, and then I need to raise it back up so that it's just even with floor one. So let's go ahead and simulate a crash or a reboot, and I'll do that by just rebooting the microcontroller. So when the uh, system crashes, reboots like that, it just goes down, hits that limit switch, detects the limit switch being pressed, and then raises the elevator back up so that it should be uh, dead even there with uh, floor one. And then from there, you can continue normal operation. You know, go back to floor two. Go back down to floor one, and so on. So that's where I'm at on this project, and I just thought I would put this up on my YouTube channel so you guys could see it. Hopefully you found it interesting. If so, let me know, and maybe I'll do more videos on this topic.